Well, welcome back to one of our favorite segments of the show, Garage Ed, here on Tech Garage, brought to you by rockauto.com. You know, my grandfather used to tell me pretty regularly, use the right tool for the job, kid. And I'll tell you what, when you're taking out an O2 sensor, that is critical, so you don't do any damage up here. I'm going to start getting one removed for a visual inspection. John's going to show you the massive, critical work that this important sensor does. Boy, and it's massive. It's one of the heaviest hitters on the car. The oxygen sensor, it's located in the exhaust stream, and what it's doing, it's reading the condition. Remember, command corrects condition. So it's reading the condition of what's going on. And take a look at this graphic. I can tell you how it works. You know, the outside oxygen has 21% oxygen in the atmosphere, and if inside the exhaust pipe, let's just say, for example, there was 18% oxygen. Well, there's not a big difference. So if there's not a big difference, that's a lean condition. Now, on the on one on the bottom, you see that there's 21% oxygen in the outside atmosphere. On this one, you only have about 10% oxygen in the exhaust stream. Well, that's a rich condition, so command corrects condition. So what's going on? Well, check it out. I got it actually running right here on the board. This is live data coming from the oxygen sensor, and you can see it over at the screen. You have oxygen sensor number one. It's switching back and forth, rich, lean, rich, lean. It's going all the way up to about 900 millivolts, and then it's dropping down to about 100 millivolts. And the quicker it does that, the better your car runs. We're trying to achieve that 14.7 stoichiometric number. So you can see rich lean, rich lean, rich lean. Well, what's going on with that post oxygen sensor? Well, if it's working correctly, it's behind the catalytic converter and you can see it's really nice and steady. It's just going right along there. That means the catalytic converter is doing its job. If that second one was bouncing up and down like the first one, well, you got a deteriorated catalytic converter. Now, oxygen sensors, there's locations for them as well. You got post oxygen sensors and pre oxygen sensors. You can look at the second graphic right there and you can see bank one. You got bank one sensor one and then behind the cat bank one sensor two. On the other side is bank two and the other one is the second sensor down there. Now those tests are great but there's some cool visual inspections you can do. So let's check in with Brian. Well all we're really doing down here is a visual inspection of the O2 sensor. So with the tool you get it kind of ready to come out by hand. Sometimes it's easier to take the wiring harness, push it up top if you've got room, and this will rotate out just a little bit easier, and voila, there's the O2 sensor. Now, you're inspecting a lot of things. First, let's look at the O2 sensor itself. Signature on this one is dark brown with some black spots. It implies that there's some oil getting onto the O2 sensor. Introduce a conversation now about catalytic converter life if oil is getting in there as a contaminant. If it was white and brown, possibly a little bit of green on this O2 sensor tip, that would imply antifreeze is getting down there. Again, another contaminant, and this guy's not going to perform properly. That can be a blown head gasket, even in its early stages, or some other type of coolant leak. And if it's bright white, almost like it's been dipped in a snowbank, that's almost always some type of RTV that's been used that's not O2 sensor safe. That could have been a valve cover job, or water pump, or thermostat, who knows? But you've got to use the right RTV that's O2 sensor safe on today's vehicles. So this is kind of an interesting one. I'm going to pull the other one, get a good look at it as well. These guys have a really important job. You heard all about that. So we want to make sure that we're getting maximum performance so they can do their job really well. Well, for more cool tips, John and Tom have the rest of the story. Tom, we talked about oxygen sensors, and those things are dealing in millivolts, man. That's a small voltage. I saw some butcher jobs with crimp connectors, this, that. Oh, man, it doesn't have to be that way. No, that, it's a part that's a sentinel watching over a whole bunch of different systems. So you want to get the, the correct part. You don't want a, a universal one-size-fits-all sort of thing. And, and the, with rockauto.com, you can get the, the correct sensor, the correct upstream sensor, downstream sensor, and the prices will still be less than the conventional store is trying to sell you a universal part. Now that's huge. Let's see what you got on the rockauto.com here. Yeah, here's an example, a 2001 Toyota 4Runner. We've got uh, upstream, downstream, a, a choice of manufacturers. You've got the OE sensor. You've got uh, e economy models that are made, still made for that specific vehicle, specific engine. Now, Tom, a lot of our viewers may not know, but you know we talk about upstream and downstream all the time. Those connectors, lengths, those connectors themselves could be different. Right, yeah, sometimes the, the connector itself, will, will, if it gets contaminated with oil or something, that, that uh, can affect the oxygen sensor's performance. Well, check it out online. Make sure you get the oxygen sensor that fits your car. you got a whole choice of them, so pick the one that you need. Matter of fact, we're going to head over and finish up today's show.